Good evening and welcome. This is Sports Report back on Cox. Danny Michaud, Matt Hatfield with you. Round ball in full effect right now. Some good games this week. You enjoying the toasty weather outside? Oh yeah, it's nice. Well, we're going to go indoors for some hot basketball action. We'll start things off in the Peninsula District, Andy, with the Hampton Crabbers playing host to the Kickatan Warriors, 8-6. and six. Hampton is Kickatan at 6-8. and eight. This is a long-time rivalry and they usually go down to the wire. In the black is Nolan, Damian Nolan. For Kikitan gets off to the early start, and then quickly it's Traquan Drummond with a three-pointer. Yeah, Drummond and Nolan, a tough tandem there. Nolan going to play his college hoops at Hampton University. Drummond just a junior, and Nolan misses inside, but he gets the put back, and Kikitan off to a great start early on, but Hampton will not go away quietly because they have Marquise Godwin splashing home a three. Back the other way, it's Grandy. Keith Grandy is a great receiver. He's also a pretty good guard. You know the Grandy man can. He get done in two sports. And then it's the feed inside from Justin Red to Dejour Battle. All oh, big men can pass too. 12 to 9 in favor of Kikitan going to the second quarter. Early start for Kikitan, but Hampton coming back. Godwin drills the three. Damian Nolan, though, he's going to answer with a three pointer in the corner. That perimeter attack for Kikitan getting it done early. And then Amir Capehart with the little teardrop floater. And then Nolan on the other end drives and finishes. It's 17-14, halfway through the second. Now nip and tuck, as you would expect with these two rivals in the peninsula. Jared Thorpe with his lone field goal tonight, and then Jalen Ray cashing in from long distance. First highlight we've seen from Ray would not be the last in a block. Out of nowhere, he swats that against the glass. He said, get that stuff out of here. And the Crabbers, Chillers, they're enjoying it. So are the fans as their team trying to make a comeback in the second half. And the guy to lead them there would be Ray. That time, though, it is Matthias Caver with the tap in. Here comes Ooh. Ray, though, with a gorgeous oh, move. sweet fade away. Pretty move and another pretty move. And the other end by Nolan is the finish with the left hand. And then a monster dunk, one-handed powerful slam by Ray there. Marquis got one with the pull-up jumper. It is in, and the Crabbers, they sense the comeback is on. Drummond again drives and scores. Then, well, it's getting tight. Hold on, folks, not done. Good feed underneath. Sellers for two more. Dominic Johnson on the pass there. And then Ladaron Grant, he was two for two from three point land. There's one of them. And here we go. 10 point lead. 43, well, not 10 points, 43, 38, not 33. And that guy again, it's Ray on the reverse this time. Oh, he's got some nifty moves in his bag of tricks. And then he's got some jams, too, as he threw down three in the second half for the Crabbers. Here's Godwin going to the basket, but he's blocked by Dominique Johnson. And now Drummond's free throws will tie it up at 44 apiece with six minutes to go. It might go down to that last possession, Andy. Inside feed off the inbounds pass find Johnson, and he scores. Other end, it's more going off the glass. And the Crabbers are just trimming into that lead, but here comes Daquan Drummond with a long three-pointer. That one's from about five feet behind the line. Answered, though, by Godwin at the other end from the corner. Back to Drummond. We got a three-point shooting contest going on. Uh, you might need a lot of them to win that contest. You the point, I think. They're going to get 25 of those two guys. 55-54, chance to win it for Kikitan, and Nolan does not get the call. Godwin will go to the line and give his team a three-point lead. Last chance for the Warriors. Down. And they get the shot off. It's a pretty good look for Nolan, but it hits the front of the rim. Just short fans going crazy. They love it. What a finish. 57, 54 year final. Hampton completing the comeback to go to 9 and 6 overall behind Jalen Ray and Marquise Godwin's 37 points combined, also 14 rebounds between those two, while Drummond and Nolan combined for 29 points for Kikitan in the narrow defeat. We got more action now, right? More action coming up. We're going out west this time. Cave Springs back in action against Patrick Henry. 10 and 3 versus 8 and 3. Pretty good matchup. Uh, two teams that have been in the top 10 in their respective divisions in the state. And early on, it's the sophomore Nicholas Logan drilling the three pointer. And Patrick Henry Roenick, they've got an outside shooting attack under Coach Jack Esworthy, but Cave Springs defense is pretty stingy. Back the other way, here's Darren McNell into the corner and Brady Hicks hits a three-pointer. Back and forth with the threes we go. Hicks going to play his college hoops at Liberty University. You see the double team though, that will leave open Terrell Anderson and he's not the guy you want to leave open because he'll make you pay. Joyce with the pass to Anderson, he connects and on the other end, it's Beckner off the rebound, tipped. There he is, he picks it up, Beckner picks it up, 
runs down the floor with the skills, ball handling, and he finds the open man for another three-pointer. Nobody's hitting anything but threes. You can go inside the arc, guys. You know Coach Jacob Cruz loves the sweet handles there and the unselfishness out of the sophomore point in Beckner, but the ball movement from Patrick Henry Roanoke, it's pretty good early on, and Terrell Anderson, he's knocking him down from long distance. 14-all stalemate going to the second stanza. You do know you can get a little closer, guys. It's all three <laughs> points. There's a feed inside. Beckner with a nice dish for an easy two points. A movement without the basketball, it is essential. And now driving to the hoop, it's going to be Joyce. He stopped at first, but he's going to get inside and get it to go as Patrick Henry Roanoke's Ford are starting to pick it up in the second period. Here's some more good ball movement inside. Not a pretty pass, but it gets the job done, and it's finished off by Hicks inside. Hicks usually a deadly shooter from the outside the arc, but this game having to do more inside the arc. And now Patrick Henry Roanoke coming the other way with Joyce, Anderson, and crew. And now you see a step-in jumper is good for Nicholas Logan. Some 10th graders making plays out here. <laughs> that was confusing. He was inside the arc. He didn't know where he was. In the second half, trying to get things going. Cave Springs inside. There's Hicks on the reverse. Tipped in right there. Zach Shannon with the tip in. And what a pretty pass by Hicks, though, showing he's more than just a shooter for Cave Spring. And now Patrick Henry Arnold trying to counter. And they do it with Quincy Hamlet, the long jumper. Ah, last poor York, I knew him well. Hamlet scores, it's Anderson on the outside. Now you gotta find something, something's gotta go. And there it is. Three point shot, tipped in and goes. That was Quishan Calfee, remember him from football, right? The quarterback for PH Roanoke, it's 30 to 27. Patriots enjoying the lead, but not for long because here comes Mason Rayer and Cave Spring now up in front. They've nudged ahead 31 to 30. Not quite finished yet. Anderson almost loses it, gets it back, gets it. Look at the big man spin and finish with the right hand off the glass. He's getting it done in all facets of the game for this one. But now Cave Spring coming right back here as it'll be putting it on the floor. Joe Furrow with a nice, I'm sorry, Jake Furrow with a nice move. 35-34, last effort for the host Patriots. And they're going to get a look here. They get the inbound at half court. Lob underneath. They get a shot of it, won't go. Rebound is tipped, tipped around again. Picked up by Joyce on the outside. One last try, just won't go in. Cave Springs holds on. They get one last inbound here, and that'll just run the clock out, and that'll do it. Oh, a heady play right there, Andy, by Beckner, as he says, I'm not going to get fouled and shoot free throws and give you a chance. As the Knights move to 6-0 in the River Ridge District, Ray are leading the way with 11 points. Calfee had five blocks, Anderson scored 13, but not quite enough as Cave Spring wins it. Well, we've had two nail biters so far. Will we get one with Granby and Norfolk Collegiate coming up next? Uh, that's a pretty good chance. Those are two good teams. Keep it tuned right here to Sports Report. Welcome back to Sports Report. Alongside Andy Michelle, I am Matthew Hatfield. Well, Andy, we've got two Norfolk teams, Granby and Norfolk Collegiate, playing in Chesapeake for the Coaches versus Cancer Classic at Deep Creek High School in Chesapeake. Granby, Norfolk Collegiate, it's public school versus private school. Very rare we get that. right across the street from each other, <laughs> right across Granby, but we go all the way to Chesapeake for this one. Opening tip-off, we're underway. Here is on the outside, oh, there we go. Coaches versus Cancer. We had to get the sign in so everybody knows. Coaches versus Cancer, and it's Adam Grant hitting a three pointer to open things up for Norfolk Collegiate. Norfolk Collegiate fans applauding there as they enjoy that. Now you got Keonze Chavis going inside for two. You got Kyle McNair, Bash Towns, Adam Grant, a lot of weapons. And Granby, they can get it done from three point range as the freshman Antoine Epps connects. Underneath the other way is Kyle McNair. Keep that name in your memory banks because you're going to hear a lot of it. Off the miss, though, back the other way is absolutely pops, stops and pops and connect. Knife Raiders got some skills there, and the Granby cheerleaders happy. It's a 15 all ball game going to the second quarter. Top of the key, it's Gian Giovanni Jones, and he pulls up and knocks down the jumper. He is long and talented. Look at him. Long guys like that shouldn't be able to shoot. Outside, that's just not fair. Epps hits another three. He can shoot. So Mike Evans, the former Booker T star, now coaching the Comets. He's got to like his team start, but Bash Towns giving Jim Markey's Oaks some muscle inside, and he gets fouled. That's a good name. Bash Towns for a power forward. Misses the free throw, and it's tipped up a couple of times. Eventually, is going to be put back in by Jones. And it's 40-35, to 35, as you see the Oaks 
have taken a five point lead, but Grammy breaking that trap and finding Jones as Jeremiah Jenkins feeds it to him. Norfolk Collegiate coming right back now as they've got a multitude of weapons. Here's one of them, Keonze Chavis pulling up and hitting the jumper. Not an easy shot, he made it look easy. That's not a tough shot on the baseline right there. Grammy trying to get something back. Inside they go, inside, Epps from outside. Chavis is on the rebound. And Chavis starting to get in on the act. The offensive glass paying dividends for the Oaks now. Granby trying to counter there, and there is Epps taking it off the dribble and getting the roll. He's showing off his full arsenal here, getting three pointers off the dribble, scoring it. 50 to 48, third quarter action. Collegiate trying to hang on, and they go inside to Jakeem Robertson. Back the other way, it's Grant from the elbow. He connects. And McNair with the spin, and it's not going to go. Rebound picked up eventually. And then he's going to pass it out. Uh oh, that's the wrong guy. There's McNair. He's wearing the other color jersey, and he takes it in to steal and to score from McNair. A lot of tough shot making on both sides in this one, and the offensive rebounding again for Norfolk Collegiate. They get three, four efforts, and there's McNair with the stick back. DeAndre Dupree, uncontested, right through the middle of the lane there. Jeremiah Jenkins, a good pump fake and a very good roll. Oh, he got the kindly roll there, and the comments are loving that. That's the type of play that can spark you, but they're down to 16 seconds to go. Collegiate, chance to put it away at the foul line. No miss there, so down five. Granby's got to act in a hurry. They do act in a hurry, but just not quite a hurry enough. Jenkins hits the three, but the buzzer sounds, and it's a two-point win for Norfolk Collegiate. So another tight one as Norfolk Collegiate pulls it out. Kyle McNair with 16 points, 13 rebounds, a double-double also for Chavis, while Granby led by Epps' 19 points, Giovanni Jones with 16 and 12. Three close ones. Can it get any better? Uh, we'll find out. we got a couple more to go. Stay with us right here on the Sports Report. Welcome back to the Sports Report. We've got more action for you, this time coming from District 17. And unfortunately, there's no Katniss Everdeen here, but we do have some pretty good basketball. The Lake Tedder Titans playing host to the Kings Fork Bulldogs, Andy, and Lake Tedder trying to bounce back from a loss the game before against the Bethel Bruins in an out-of-conference matchup. This one, though, key as the winner of the regular season title with now the new setup, you get an automatic first to regional. So you want to get that ahead in the standings of your team you're playing. And early on, it'll be Lake Tedder no fear at all going to the basket. Joe Bryant, the sophomore, getting it done. Two winning records coming into this thing. You expect a pretty good one. Bryant getting it done early and then trying to come back for King's Fork. And, uh-oh, there's a turnover. And that's up ahead to Travius Smith with the stop. Remember that name, the rangy wing who was second team All-State for Lake Tower. Pretty darn good. And you see Jill and Jordan with the steal on that play. And now the ball movement getting in the corner to Ahmad Elliott. And he gets it to go from three-point land. A lot of Lake Taylor highlights early on here. Could Kings Fort get something going? Well, they get it over half court, so that's a that's a start. Then they move it around. Some some ball movement for the Bulldogs. They find Daquan Wilson from three, and there you go. Now they're coming around. 26 to 15 at the end of the first quarter. It's not a bad game here. They're hanging around. No, and good for Coach Joshua to have uh, Wilson back in the lineup. He was hurt earlier in the season, so he's a boost to their attack. And now Lake Center with the basketball. Another three-point shot is in for Gabe Miller as the Titans just have a bevy of options to go to offensively. And then the defense takes over for the Titans. They try a little pressure here, get the turnover, and they get the outlet pass. And here's that guy again. Here is Smith up high and down hard with a one-handed stuff. Throw it down. And you know, Coach Kenny Brown likes to see defense turn into instant offense as Lake Keto will be pressuring and trapping as much as they can. This time, no good, and Travis Smith is going to turn it into his own personal highlight tape, another dunk. Oh, you liked it the first time. Let's do it again. More offense from defense. 
An 18 to two second quarter run makes it 44 to 17 for Lake Taylor at the half. Head spinning stuff there for the visitors at Kings Fork. That can overwhelm you real quickly. And Jalen Jordan, he's not gonna slow down as he cashes in from three point territory. Well, we saw Smith do two highlights back to back. Let's see if Jordan can do two highlights back to back. One three from outside. They rotated around almost the exact same spot, the exact same swish. Jordan, another three pointer. Jordan keeps doing that. They'll call him Mike, not Jalen. And now Lake Taylor with the basketball again, getting that transition game revved oh, no. up. And there here he goes. Again. Oh, it's showtime. One hand. Anybody can do it with one hand. Let's do it with two hands. Watch the replay. And he's going to take off and go kaboom. Travis Smith, one of the premier dunkers in the state. He's one of those guys that comes to mind that could win a dunk contest. Maybe we'll set that up after the season, see if he wins it. 64-26, all Lake Taylor right now. Not quite done, no. Here comes Kings Fork back. Here's a steal, and they go down low. Wilson with the lay-in on the outlet pass. And you see now Kings Fork going to keep Commit to their defense here, Ron Trey Pope and Draquan Wilson, two of the guys that's going to spark them. And now a steal here for James Hatton, and he'll get the layup, but too much Lake Taylor for three quarters to make any comeback possible in the fourth. Not the sharpest finish for Lake Taylor, but you know, 72 to 40, you can't complain too much. They get the easy win there. Especially when you get nine steals between Travis Smith and Joe Bryant. They score 10 apiece, while the Bulldogs have 24 turnovers, just too much to beat a team as talented and loaded as Lake Taylor as the Titans push their record to 11-3 overall on the season. Up next, it's Norfolk versus the Beach. It is Norview at Salem. It's a key conference none, the Atlantic Conference clash as everybody's chasing Green Run, the unbeaten team atop the league standings. But Norview last year won the conference, got to the state championship, and lost to Henrico. So they know they're not that far off. All right, early going. Norview in the blue. Some ball movement. Good inside pass. Jalen Frazier finishes it off. Jalen Frazier, one of the returning seniors for Coach Jonathan Wilson that he counts on along with Lamont Stewart. A 4-0 lead for his pilots on the road. But Salem, they have some weaponry, and there's one of the guys that can get things done for them. Ray Ward, the guard there who helped them beat Lanceton early in the season with a big effort. A guy for Coach Justin Parrish to lean on. 9-4 in favor of the host Sun Devils early. Early going, here it's Jonathan Norfleet, taking it inside, driving and finishing. He's a sophomore with an offer on the table already from St. Francis out of Pennsylvania, 17 to 12 in favor of Salem, trying to break that Norview trap. And they're gonna try to get it to Norfleet. As you see Ward here will throw it to him and Norfleet slices the defense down the lane for two, pretty move. Driving with the left hand, finishing with the right hand. That guy's pretty good. 19-14, Salem not finished yet on the outside. Looking for some offense here. Oh, there's a step back three from Ward, and he nails it. And Ward, one of the guys along with Norfleet, powering that Salem attack, and they have the lead 24 to 20 late in the second quarter. How will Norview respond here as Salem starting to ratchet up the defense with a trap? William Steger with the lob oh, to pretty. Keontae Johnson, and the sophomore receives it and finishes. Pretty looking pass right there. This is a game here, folks. This is a four-point game into the second quarter. Bounce pass, baseline jumper does not go. Rebound to Norfleet, outlet pass, DJ Taylor. Uh, and he's a guy that wants to get above the rim as much as possible, why not? Dunking is fun. 28-27 and Salem's having a lot of fun. They're in the lead. Outside pass, here's another three and that is good. Guess who that is? That is Johnson from the corner, three point shot, 31 all. Inside, outside, working for Salem here, but Norby gonna come right back here as Ashby hits Johnson and Coach Jonathan Wilson knowing the defense, if they just stop the three-point shooters and the, and the slam dunk guys, they'll be right back in it. 34-33, they take a quick lead, and now the defense is back in on it. Ashby up ahead to Lamont Stewart, and he slams it down. Well, any way you can get turnovers gets you right back into things. This is a back and forth game here. Right now, 40 to 34 in the third quarter, under two minutes to go. Here is Stewart. And that's an easy finger roll. Lay out on the good outlet and the finish. And Norview now starting to get momentum. 49 to 39 early in the fourth quarter. The Sun Devils now on the break and it'll be Tony Epps Jr. finishing it off the glass. One of the backup guards for Salem here as they close into that deficit just down by six with a little more than three minutes to go. All right, here is some controversy here. Loose ball, players diving on it. Is it a foul? Is it a jump ball? Is it, what is it? Is it a turnover? Uh-oh. It didn't go the way that the coach wanted it to go. Justin Parrish voicing his displeasure. He's not happy with the call. He wanted possession there or timeout. And uh, he's letting the referees know, but I don't think they're going out to eat afterwards. Yeah, probably not. Here we go. 
Two minutes, 30 seconds left. 53-45, Norview on top, looking to finish it out. Oh, and they do it with style. Stewart to Johnson with the alley-oop. That's a combo that'll get it done for Coach Wilson and the Pilots, and it does get it done. 63-50, to 50, they prevail on the road to keep pace in Conference 9. You see Stewart and Johnson combining for 41 points. They also crashed the glass real well with 25 rebounds between them. Norfleet had 14 to pace Salem. Taylor chipping in 13 to help the Sun Devils as well. Seems like a more close, even game till the end. Things kind of fell apart for me. All right, a little extra time. Matt, you're going to have to earn your money this time. Uh -oh. We're going to provide you now with the list of the unbeaten. The list? The perfect. The teams who have not lost this season. You tell me which of these teams is for real, which of them has not just played anybody yet, and or maybe all of them are for real. Well, looking at the list here, we'll start in 5A with Green Run and Wakefield. Neither one has had a major test yet, but Green Run's got some coming as they get closer to the playoffs here. Uh, not many seniors on either squad, so I think we'll see them both around for a while in the 5A title race. Loudoun Valley, they've been sort of challenged so far, playing John Champ up in 4A. It's a tough team for them to compete with. I think they're going to be a factor come state tournament time. Eastern View is the big surprise at 15-0, not really expected to compete. We know Norcom's for real. They're 15-0. They're on the longest winning streak in the state of Virginia at 24 games as they head into a big showdown in the Virginia Preps Classic against Cape Henry. While in 2A and 1A, George Mason, sort of a surprise. Not to them, though. They were pretty good last year trying to take that next step. Honeaker is the main threat for them and with Tanner Robinette. They're a team in 1A that I think is uh, state championship ready. Out of this group, Norcom I think is most for real. Honeaker most for real for their division. Norcom is in 3A, Honeaker is in 1A. Big matchups coming as we hit the second half of the season. Coming down to the stretch. Yeah, I think we're going to look at Norcom and John Marshall in 3A will be a fun race. 6A is sort of wide open. Westfield and Woodside should be teams to watch out for. 5A is the toughest division in boys basketball in the entire state of, of, of Virginia. You could see anybody win the state title out of 5A. Interesting stuff coming. More coming up. Stay with us next week. We've got more action. Boys and girls high school basketball right here on the Cox Sports Report.